Hey, Grace Church family. It's good to be with you again. Continue to pray and, you know, ask God to cover you and protect you, provide for you, uh, be everything that you need uh, in these days. You know, um, someone said the truth doesn't change according to our ability to stomach it. Yet man continues to mess around with truth. Uh, some people propagate subjectivism, uh, that something is true if it makes me feel good. Some people uh, believe in relativism, which is uh, it might be truth for you, but it doesn't mean that that's true for me. Others believe in pluralism, which means truth can change with times and circumstances. And then you throw in this whole thing of perceived truth. <laughs> oh, absolute truth really isn't very popular, is it? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 25 times in the Gospel of John, Jesus uses the words, I tell you the truth. Some translations have amen, amen, barely, barely, truly, truly. And so if we, we really want to know truth, then we need and must listen to and know Jesus. And if at any time we think Jesus doesn't have it quite right, we have to remember that if Jesus lied, uh, then he wasn't perfect, which means he couldn't be that perfect sacrifice for your sins and my sins, which means that salvation he offers is really not salvation. It's hollow, it's nothing. You know, in my last devotional, we looked at the truth about salvation. Uh, the truth statement being, in order for us to enter into God's kingdom here and now, and in order for us to get into heaven, there must be a spiritual rebirth. There's just no other way into heaven. But maybe you or someone you know or some people... Uh, respond to that with, well, that's your opinion. That's your religion, not mine. There are many ways to get to heaven. So why can I say with certainty that spiritual rebirth is needed to get into heaven? Well, I can say that because Jesus said it. And if you don't apply this truth about salvation, then nothing else that Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, I tell you the truth, none of that will matter. So what's the next truth statement? And we're going to go in order as they appear in the Gospel of John. Uh, here again, there's a grouping of three statements, all pointing to really the same truth, uh, John 5, 19 says, I tell you the truth, <clears throat> the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. And verse 24, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He is crossed over from death to life. And then verse 25, I tell you the truth, the time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear, who believe, who trust, will live. Now the first part of John chapter 5 has to do with Jesus' interaction and healing of the lame man at the pool of Bethesda. And I spoke about that one day uh, in one of my mercy devotionals. And because of what Jesus did, uh, not just healed the lame man, but healed him on the Sabbath, 
two accusations were made against Jesus. One was that he broke the Sabbath law of working by working on the Sabbath. People saw healing as working. And the second one, that he claimed himself to be equal to God, really making the claim that he was God. I want to really speak to the second one because I think that's mostly what these true statements speak towards. Understand that Jesus doesn't imitate God. Jesus is equal with the Father. And I know people do like to imitate those they would like to be like. For instance, when I played Little League Baseball, the most popular bat, and in those days they were wooden bats, that maybe dates me somewhat, and there was always a signature of a major league baseball player on the bat. Well, the most popular bat, the bat that everyone wanted to use, was the Mickey Mantle bat. Thinking that you use the bat, you're imitating the Mick, you know, when and you can be a good hitter. Uh, fast forward to when our boys were in uh, middle school and high school and they played basketball. Everybody, everybody had to have a pair of Air Jordans because they wanted to be like Mike. And then you think about all of the books on business and success that tell us uh, just do what I did, and you'll be successful. So Jesus is telling his accusers here that, you know, he's not imitating the Father. In fact, he is the same nature as the Father. In fact, he and the Father are one. And how do we know that this wasn't just an imitation thing? Well, for one thing, the Jews wouldn't have been so upset and angry if they thought it was just an imitation. And second, because Jesus has the same power, the same authority, the same capabilities as God himself. Just as God will raise the dead, so will Jesus give life to those who are spiritually dead and physically dead. And just as the Jews believe God would be the judge, God has given this responsibility over to the Son so that Jesus will be the judge. The Jews were right in their thinking, God will judge, but they didn't have all the facts. God, in the form of Jesus, will judge mankind. And if you wonder about that, go read through Matthew 25 and Luke chapter 13. Now, the truth statements um, from the second and third amen, amen sayings is that the way to God is through the God-man, Jesus. So if you want to hear from God, then listen to Jesus. If you want to get to where God is, then do what Jesus says. No one gets to the Father except through the Son. So what are some of the world's lies? What, what are some of the lies that are spread in regard to this truth of Jesus, in fact, being God and the only way to heaven? Well, one lie is that Jesus was just a man. Now, yeah, he was a good man. He was a good moral man. He was a good moral teaching man. In fact, he was a prophet. Yeah, he was a prophet sent from God. But the question is, if he was such a good man, if he was such a good moral man, if he was such a good moral teacher and a prophet sent from God, then how could he lie? Remember, a true prophet from God had to be right 100% of the time, otherwise they would be killed. 
Another lie is that Jesus became like God. He was the first to attain God-like status. And if we would but follow his example, we too could become like a God, like a God. Uh, but remember how angry the Jews became. Angry because of what Jesus was claiming, equality with God. Now, other lies include uh, Jesus was the first and the direct creation of God. He's a created spirit being who became a man and evolved into a God, one of many gods. Well, I direct you to Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23, and it speaks of the supremacy of Jesus Christ. It speaks of who he is. And one of the things he is is the creator. The creator. And as you read that text, understand that when Paul talks about the firstborn, that's not a numerical thing. That's not how that word is used, never numerically. It's talking about preeminence. Uh, the one with the right to rule, uh, talks about really being sovereign over all. So many lies and corruption about the truth of who Jesus is. So many people have been deceived. So many people are living the lies as the truth. So many people have rejected Jesus because they believe the lies. What about us? What about us who, who we say we believe and are followers of Jesus Christ? Do we believe any of the lies about who Jesus is? for our lifestyle decision. Uh, just take us back to Jesus' encounter with the lame man at the pool. Remember what Jesus asked him? He asked him, do you want to get well? You know what? Jesus asks us the same question today. Do you want to get well? Do you have a real desire to change? Do you have a real desire for healing? Do you have a real desire to be made whole and well? Do you have a real desire to put to death that sin habit in your life that's causing you to sink deeper and deeper into despair and away from the Lord. Do you want to get well? Well, the truth statements tell us, remind us that Jesus is enough. That Jesus is who we need. That Jesus is enough to free us from our sins, to rescue us from danger, to brush away our tears, to reconcile us to God, to remove our guilt, to fill us with hope, to take us to heaven. Jesus is enough. But where do we start? Okay, Jesus is enough. Where do we start? Listen, let me ask you some questions. Do you believe in an all-powerful God who created you for himself and for his pleasure? His pleasure? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is God come in the flesh? Do you believe that the only way to God 
is through Jesus Christ? Do you believe that the only way to get into God's kingdom is to be spiritually reborn, trusting in the death and sacrifice of Jesus Christ for your sins and the hope of eternal life through his resurrection from the dead? Do you believe that you are now adopted as a child of God? Do you believe that you have direct access to God through his Holy Spirit? Do you believe that you are complete in Christ? Do you believe that you are free forever from condemnation? Do you believe that you can find grace and mercy to help in time of need? Do you believe that you need not worry or be anxious that in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving you can present your request to God? Do you believe that you have a friend in Jesus who is closer to you than a brother? Do you believe that even though you may be hard-pressed, you will not be crushed. Even though you may be perplexed, you need not despair. Even though you may be persecuted, you will not be abandoned. Even though you may be struck down, you will not be destroyed. And even though you are in quarantine, you are not alone. All the, the promises and the truth about our Lord, who he is, and what he does for his children. Uh, way too many promises to repeat to you today. So the question is how, how do we experience these promises and more? Well, John 15 gives us the illustration of the vine and the branches. Listen to some of the verses I pulled out of John chapter 15. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. If you obey my commands, truth, truth, you will remain in my love. Uh, other translations use the word abide instead of remain. Being in close fellowship with him. And the question is, do you want to get well? Well, the healing, the, the wholeness, the the, the experience of fulfilled promises comes from an uninterrupted, abiding, obedient life with Jesus Christ. Not just seeking and following him when it's convenient. Not just when we have a great need. Not just when we want something. Not for just a short time, not just for periods of time. Jesus says, remain in me, stay with me, stick with me, abide in me, rest in me, follow after me, and you will discover that Jesus is enough. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these true statements 
true statements about who Jesus is, the fact that he is God. And as God, he, he is able to do anything and everything, provide and uh, protect everything we need for life and godliness. Uh, thank you, Lord, that the provisions are found in Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus is enough for us. And I pray that we would not just lean into Jesus when we need something, but that we would abide in him, remain in him, and discover in him the fulfillment of his promises for his children because we are his children. We are children of the King. So God, thank you. Thank you that you came so that we might know you for your great love in bringing us into your kingdom and giving us that assurance of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.